Welcome to China Horse Business, the one and only podcast focusing on the booming Chinese equine market, bringing to you by two experts of Chinese equine industry, Zoe King and Wen Li from Shanghai and Beijing, introducing China to the world. Good morning, Wen. How's it going? Uh, morning. I came back from Yulong for the three-day event with CHO Annual Conference. Yulong Autumn Sale and the Big Race Day. There was a minor earthquake about 3.9 degree on the morning of September 3, and Qinglang won the CHO Derby Cup in the afternoon, though it never won any race before. This sounds unbelievable. So, what do we have for today's China news? On September the first. The Seventh China Horse Owners Alliance (CHOA) conference was held at Yulong International Hotel. Zhang Yuesheng, owner of Yulong and the chairman of CHOA, announced the alliance's plan to attract more vice chairmen, members, and to safeguard the integrity of racing. CHOA Secretary General and Vice Chairman Huang Xinchai delivered a report on the three years sixty. Million RMB, that's 8.6 million U.S. dollar prize money, boost to Chinese breed thoroughbred races. It will give out 10.04 million RMB by the end of the season, September 24, and 20 million RMB set aside for 2023, and 30 million RMB allocated for 2024. There are now 31 stadiums in China whose progeny are eligible for CHOA races, including Group One winner Susa, Potniche, and one more no more. On September the second, Taoping Yulong Autumn Sale, organized by Yulong and Zhongxin Auction, was the entertainer, a Caravaggio three-year-old son and Angie unnamed two-year-old daughter, each for 800,000 RMB. Both lots raced the next day and were part of the 75 thoroughbreds Yulun purchased from Ireland and arrived in China in March. What was also auctioned off were three CHOA recognized stallion quarters, each sold quickly for over 300,000 RMB. On September 3, Irish runners claimed two out of five races on Chinese mainland reaches race day. Rapidos won his second consecutive race over. One thousand six hundred meters. Shaotan Yingxiang won by only one hundredth of a second on her debut. The richest race of the year is the two million RMB CHOA Breeders Cup, and was won by Shengli Yuanquan, Chivari two years old daughter. In our channel club section, we'll bring in to Yamai Question Club, Yamai Ma Shu, which was founded in two thousand seventeen in Shenzhen City, Guangdong Province. The club has more than sixty horses, including one blast, thoroughbreds, ponies for teenagers to ride. Yama also cooperates with universities to cultivate equestrian talents. The club is a member of Chinese Equestrian Association and a vice chairman member of Guangdong Equestrian Association, and has forty-six thousand square meters in total, which includes fifty thousand square meters for training arena. Yema owns half a dozen competition fields and can organize FEI three start competitions. Yema uses FN German Equestrian Federation teaching system and CEA's riding level criteria to teach and organize famous trainers and coaches to give lectures. Now it's time for our China story. Hey, Carrie, long time no see. Hello, yeah, long time no see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah、uh, I know you'll be busy with visiting the farms, the、um, the stars, and the checking the the foals, the fillies, and、uh, the two year olds, yearlings. So, first of all, please give us a brief introduction about yourself and、uh, how did you enter the equine industry? Um. So my name is Kara Hu. I'm originally from Beijing, China. Now I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. So、um, I started riding horse when I was like 13 years old. By that time, I was mainly、um, doing like just as a hobby. Like I was doing a bit of show jumping, like a bit of、um, equestrian. And then、uh, I went to America to do my master's degree. So I was in Johns Hopkins University to do a master in finance. And when I was there at that time,、um, I think it was back in 2013. There was a program. 
the Dubai International Thoroughbred Internship, the DITI program. That was organized by DARI. That was mainly facing the Chinese um, uni graduates. So I applied to that program. And at that time, I was based in DARI, America, in Kentucky. So that was a great one year for me. And during that year, I applied for the... At that time, it was called the Darty Flying Stars, and now it's called the Godolphin Flying Star Program. And I was very lucky to be selected as one of the 12 trainees into the Darty Flying Star Program. So that was a great experience for me. And yeah, so I did um, two years of the Godolphin Flying Stars, and we went to Ireland, UK, America, Australia, and Dubai. And we mark out in the morning. We, we, we were doing hands on work in the morning, mark out on stable, spending time with yearlings, two year olds, spending time at the training stable. And then in the afternoon, we'll like do farm visits. We'll visit different industry organizations. And we were very lucky to get lectures from a lot of the vets, a lot of the industry figures. So, yeah, that's how I got started in the industry. Oh, great. And for the viewers who don't know the Godolphin Flying Star, there's a two-year program fully funded by Godolphin and only 10 trainees every year and I get a two-year program. That is the golden ticket to the thoroughbred world anywhere in the world. And you, if you uh, graduate from this program, you almost can pick any job you want in the thoroughbred industry. And uh, the second question is, what do you do now as a host professional? Um, so now, um, now surprisingly, after the Flying Start program, I'm now working in the thoroughbred racing industry. So I'm now um, is the CEO of Rafa Mustang. Um, Rafa Mustang is owned by a Chinese investor called Mr. Wu Jie and his um, Zhejiang Rafa Holding Group. Rafa Mustang is a breeding and racing operation. We're based in Australia. Uh, but we also have racehorses and breeding stock in Europe and Japan. Um, so my job really is just like everything related to our horses. So ranging from um, admin side, like organize their insurance during the sale season, I'll attend all the sales, I'll uh, select the yearlings. And during breeding season, I will make mating plans. I'll, you know, plan which stallions for our mares to go to and make sales plans for our winnings and yearlings. Yeah, so it's every um, aspect, I would say, of the industry and for our racehorses. Like I'll do the communication with the trainers and with other co-owners. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yes, a lot of fun and uh, a lot of responsibility. This probably the the first chief executive of any profession I interviewed. And uh, the final question is, what experience benefits you the most in your career? Um, I would say is going to different cells. I would say um. Because I think growing up in the city in Beijing, I didn't have the luxury to spend a lot of time with horses, um, let alone thoroughbred race horses. I still remember when I went to the first sale in Australia, which was a Magic Million yearly sale in 2018. Oh my God, I was just like so overwhelmed. There are like so many different sires, so many different pedigrees, bloodlines, and so many people, you know, vendors, buyers, trainers, all those people. It was such a overwhelming, but like fascinating experience. And now like after going to the sales for four or five years, it's really like a place you can meet all different sorts of people. And then you get to see all the progenies, the stocks by different stallions, different families. It's just a fascinating experience. True, to see all the horses when they're young and uh, you can pick them, cherry pick them and cultivate them and see how they're going to turn themselves to a magnificent beast on the track. Well, that was something that I definitely would want to re-experience in the future. I know that you are in Australia and very difficult for you to travel back to China and I really hope to see you again face to face so we can have a longer discuss in the future. Okay, Gary, that's a wrap and take care there and I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks, me too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. This is the ninth episode of season three. I hope you enjoy it. And the monthly China Horse Business Live is coming. The next webinar will take place on the 10th of October from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. CEST. Yes, and guys, see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. This podcast is co-hosted by Zoe King and Wen Li, powered by Wonder Horse a business solution provider focusing on Chinese equine market and a bespoke equestrian community in China.